Welcome to the MOOC's course in Organic Chemical Technology. The title of today's lecture is Chloralkali Industry, Chlorine and Caustic Soda. In the previous lecture, we started discussing about chloralkali industries where uh, we found that you know sodium carbonate, sodium hydroxide and chlorine are the primary component which are uh, forming basis for the chloralkali industries. We have also discussed production of sodium carbonate or soda ash by two different methods. One is the solvay process, another one is the modified solvay process which is also known as the dwell process. Right? In the solvay process, we only get sodium carbonate as the product whereas in the modified uh, solvay process or dwell process, we get uh, ammonium chloride also as a product along with the sodium carbonate product. Okay? In this lecture, we will be discussing about the remaining two major components of chloralkali industry. They are nothing but chlorine and caustic soda. This chlorine and caustic soda are produced as co-products in electrolysis of uh, sodium chloride uh, brine solution. That is the reason we are uh, discussing about the production of this chlorine and caustic soda together simultaneously in a combination. Actually start of chlorine industry in 1920s was result of successful development of electrolytic uh, brine decomposition process. Until uh, then the chlorine etc. So caustic soda was produced uh, by uh, uh, you know lime and soda ash process. Right? Once these uh, electrolytic uh, decomposition process have been developed, then production of this uh, caustic soda as well as chlorine has been produced by this electrolytic decomposition process. Once this electrolytic brine decomposition process has been established, then uh, mostly chlorine and then uh, caustic soda are produced by electrolytic brine decomposition process only. Electrolytic brine decomposition process is so much established by this point. NaOH formed in the ratio of 1.1 tons per ton of uh, chlorine in the electrolytic process. Okay? So, let us say you get uh, 1 ton chlorine in a process, then uh, it is possible that you may be getting 1.1 or 1.15 tons of uh, sodium hydroxide in general in a uh, given electrolytic process. Moreover, whatever the caustic soda that is available are produced in India, out of that 80 percent is produced by electrolytic process. Similarly, whatever the chlorine is being produced in India or more than 95 percent is produced by this electrolytic process. Okay? Previously, chlorine had been solely manufactured by a lime soda ash process which is gradually being replaced by the electrolysis process because of the several advantages of electrolytic processes as we are going to discuss. However, once these electrolytic processes have been established and then found that very much beneficial economical, this lime soda ash process has become incompetitive. So, mostly it is not being used nowadays. Whatever it is being used or you know whatever the sodium hydroxide etc. is produced by lime soda process that is produced in house and then for the captive uh, uses purpose only. The required inventory for diachrom and then mercury cell process, actually electrolytic process is having different types of you know cell processes. Electrolytic brain decomposition can be done by diaphragm cell as well as the mercury cell process. Right? So, there are some requirements of you know asbestos uh, cells etc, mercury cells etc, all those things are required for these processes. Those inventory for the, these diaphragm and mercury cell processes which are nothing but electrolytic processes, uh, they were developed uh, well before uh, chlorine production started by the electrolytic process. Actually chlorine production started in approximately 1920s onwards. It was produced before also but you know dominant production started from the 1920s only. With the development of solvay process for making sodium carbonate, the sodium hydroxide production has become relatively common chemical. Even though electrolytic sodium hydroxide was produced in 1890s, lime soda process remained dominant until late 1940s. But however, nowadays mostly these chemicals are produced by the electrolytic processes as mentioned here. Okay? But however, sodium hydroxide is no longer produced for sale by lime soda processes. However, small amounts continue to be made by this method largely for captive consumption only, not for the marketing purpose. Pertinent properties of uh, chlorine, molecular weight is 70.9, melting point is minus 101.6 degrees centigrade, boiling point is minus 34.6 degrees centigrade, liquefaction point is at 15 degree centigrade 5.7 atmospheres. 
it is very toxic gas, so it is not allowed to have more than 2 ppm maximum concentration. Grades, technical grades are available 99 percent, critical temperature 146 degree centigrade and then critical pressure 93.5 atmospheres. Similarly, pertinent properties of sodium hydroxide if you see molecular weight is 40, boiling point is 1390 degree centigrade, melting point is 318 degree centigrade. Solubility very much soluble in water with high exothermic heat of solution. It's you know when you uh, dissolve NaOH uh, uh, crystals in a uh, beaker of water, then what happens? Usually uh, you do not add kilos or you know gram, several grams of sodium hydroxide and then mix it because it is very exothermic, lot of heat is being evolved. So then you know one by one crystals you drop into the water and then mix it and then by the time this uh, one crystal itself is mixed the beaker becomes very warm. So you wait for this beaker to become cool down or normal temperature and then only you add additional crystals of sodium hydroxide or additional pellets of sodium hydroxide. That is how it is been done in the laboratory because uh, when the sodium hydroxide crystals or pellets are dissolved in water they liberate huge amount of heat. Grades available in solid forms of flakes, granules, sticks, lumps, pellets and aqueous solutions also. For example, if you are uh, having uh, or if you wanted to have a aqueous form a sodium hydroxide, purity is available in 50 and 73 percent NaOH. If you wanted to have the same thing in solid form, then 60 percent Na2O that is 77.4 percent NaOH2, 98 percent NaOH crystals are available if you wanted to have a you know this uh, NaOH in solid forms. Conception pattern uh, we see for both the components chlorine and then sodium hydroxide. If you see the end uses of chlorine, it is uh, used in pulp and paper industries, PVC, polyvinyl chloride uh, manufacturing also it is used. Chlorinated paraffin wax in organic chemicals, organic chemicals, chlorinated organic chemicals, pesticides, insecticides, water treatment purpose also this chlorine is used, pharmaceuticals also some chemicals you know chlorine requirements are there. Rayon grade wood pulp, for example you know some of these uh, chlorine and then sodium hydroxide productions by electrolytic uh, processes are in installed near or within the industrial complex of such industries like pulp and paper industries or uh, rayon grade wood pulp etc. Okay. So, what I mean to say that these are you know required for these industries in large quantities. So, rather procuring them from other places, uh, industrial prefer to have these electrolytic processes in their uh, industrial complex itself so that they can produce the required Cl2 and then NaOH and then use there itself. Similarly, end uses of NaOH if we see organic chemicals, several organic chemicals, uh, textile industries, paper and pulp, alumina soaps and detergents manufacturing, this NaOH is being used, several inorganic chemicals, neutralization purpose it is used, in dye industries also it is used, pharmaceuticals also it is used, demineralization purpose also it is used, petrochemicals, oil drilling, minerals and metals extraction and so many if you keep on listing so many applications of NaOH are existing and that is the reason NaOH has become a common chemical. Methods of production, there are three different types of methods of productions are there. We are going to discuss about electrolytic process only because we are uh, discussing the production of a Cl2 and NaOH together. So out of three processes, first process is electrolytic process producing chlorine, sodium hydroxide and then hydrogen as co-product which accounts for uh, 80 percent of the production of these chemicals. This electrolytic process can be done by using different cells. So one is the diaphragm electrolytic cell, another one is the uh, mercury cell, another one is the membrane cell. Okay? See uh, diaphragm electrolyte cells uses saturated sodium chloride solution and produces 10 to 12 percent of NaOH which will be concentrated by using uh, evaporation processes. However, this process uh, is being replaced by membrane cells. Why what? There are some merits and demerits of each of these three cell processes are there that we are going to discuss anyway. Second one is the mercury electrolytic cell. This is also within the electrolytic process. This mercury electrolytic cell uh, uses saturated NaCl solution with solid salt makeup okay? and it produces 70 percent caustic solutions directly. 
here you get uh, 10 to 12 percent only then you do the evaporation process to increase up to maximum 50 percent only. Whereas here you can produce NaOH up to 70 percent purity. Okay? So, we are going to see these details anyway. So, second process is the chlorine processes without co-products, without any co-products. For example, HCl air oxidation with uh, iron oxide catalyst, then HCl air Cl2 oxychlorination process, example production of uh, ethylene dichloride from ethylene etc. Then nitric acid sodium chloride air process, then third one is nothing but the lime soda process where NaOH is being produced without chlorine production here soda whatever Na2CO3 is there that reacts with the lime CaOH twice to give NaOH and CaCO3 products. Okay? However, this process uh, found to be not competitive so people are not using this process nowadays. So, we will be discussing primarily this process, in fact only this process, within this process we are going to see how diaphragm electrolytic cell and then mercury electrolytic cell and then membrane cells are being used to produce or being used to uh, do the electrolytic decomposition of the NaCl brain. Electrolytic process, first we start with electrolysis reactions, we see for the diaphragm cell type, cell notations, first we have a anode and then we have a cathode. right? So, in the compartment NaCl solution is uh, introduced and then electromagnetic uh, field uh, has been uh, supplied so that decomposition of this NaCl takes place so that you get Na plus and Cl minus. This Cl minus releases an electron uh, at the anode and then produces the chlorine gas. Whereas this Na plus uh, passes towards the cathode, right? here uh, it reacts with the OH minus of water, water whatever water is there that also being decomposed into OH minus and then H plus. That Na plus of uh, NaCl that is reacting with NaOH and in forming NaOH solution, aqueous solution which is 10 to 12 percent only. Right? Whatever the uh, proton is there that receives the electron released by the uh, chlorine ion and then forms hydrogen gas. Okay? So, this is the uh, common representation of the reaction, but specifically if you write at anode chloride ions release electron to form chlorine gas, at cathode sodium ions react with water and then uh, electrons so that you know this water decomposes into the H plus and OH minus, so you have Na plus and then OH minus forming uh, NaOH and then whatever the proton H plus of uh, water is there that uh, receives the electron from here and then produces the hydrogen gas. So, the overall reaction if you see NaCl plus H2O giving rise to NaOH plus chlorine plus hydrogen. Okay? Mercury cell, cell notation we see similarly here also we have a anode and cathode, but here we are using NaCl aqueous saturated solution. Here what happened? whatever the NaCl is there that forms Na plus and then Cl minus. The Cl minus uh, move towards the anode and then release the electron to produce uh, chlorine same as the previous one. Whereas the Na plus here that receives the electron uh, released by the chlorine and then uh, it takes and then forms a uh, zero valence uh, sodium Na naught at the cathode and then it reacts with mercury to form sodium amalgam that is NaHg. Right? This NaHg further deuneeding of this uh, sodium amalgam takes place where this NaHg reacts with water to form NaOH plus H2 and then releasing the mercury. Okay? So, it is a general representation. Reactions if you see at the anode it is same reaction as in the diaphragm cell, but at cathode Na plus plus electron forming Na naught. This Na naught reacting with mercury to form uh, sodium amalgam. This sodium amalgam undergo denuding reaction where NaHg reacts with water to form NaOH and then hydrogen gas and then releasing the mercury. Okay? So, overall reaction is same NaCl plus H2O giving rise to NaOH plus H2 and then Cl2 gases. Okay? So, here in both the process H2 is also being produced, but you know amount of H2 is very small compared to the NaOH and Cl2. 
okay? that we are going to see anyway. Now what are the raw materials whether are you using the diaphragm cell uh, electrolysis process or mercury cell electrolysis process or membrane cell electrolysis process, the raw material is same, okay? NaCl brand. Okay, main raw material is depending on the type of electrolysis cell used, purified solution of 10 to 15 percent NaCl or solid salt is required. Here in the case of diaphragm cell, you can use 10 to 15 percent sodium chloride solution. In the mercury cell process, you need solid salt. Okay? Minor quantities because some kind of uh, purification, drying kind of things are required here. For example, chlorine that is uh, produced, it is in wet condition, so it has to be dried. So, for that purpose you need H2SO4. Okay? And then similarly, the solution, brine solution, whatever you have taken, there may be impurities. So, you need sodium carbonate, soda ash kind of components so that to remove those impurities like you know in, in the form of calcium salts or magnesium salts, etc. So, for those purpose, some amount of sodium carbonate or uh, sodium hydroxide are required for the salt purification. And then similarly, for the chlorine drying, you need some amount of H2SO4. How much it is that we are going to see in the Next slide, quantitative requirements. Basis is 1 ton of Cl2, that is we are taking basis and doing the calculations. So, if you are taking 1 ton of Cl2 production as a target, so then you will get 1.15 tons of sodium hydroxide, 98 percent purity and then 283 normal meter cubes of H2 only, that is only 26 kgs, small amount is being produced. Salt 1.3 tons required. Soda ash 26 kgs, sulfuric acid 5 to 6 kgs, sodium hydroxide 10 to 15 kgs, graphite and mercury required as per the cell uh, depletion, steam 11 tons for diaphragm cell process and electricity 2900 kilowatt hours. Plant capacity usually 100 to 1000 tons per day of chlorine in a series of electrolysis units. How many units may be there? There may be units like 500 or something as possible. 200 to 500 it is possible in general because each one is producing 0.5 to 2 tons of Cl2 per day. Now, this is the uh, flow sheet for the uh, production of uh, chlorine as well as the sodium hydroxide. But here we are studying this process in a combined approach. Actually in industries you may not be having combined approach, you may be having individual approaches as well. But however, there are some industries combined approaches are all there, so then that is what we are discussing. Okay? So, uh, one is the diaphragm cell, another one is the mercury cell here. So, for the diaphragm cell, we have a brine from the uh, wells and then that has to be purified in uh, brine purifier using sodium carbonate or sodium hydroxide depending on what kind of impurities that is there in the brine solution. So, uh, whatever the calcium, magnesium, iron, salts, etc. are there they will be uh, removed as uh, sludge in this brain purifier chamber. Then uh, almost purified brain is passed through a filter to check if any Na2CO3 or any of these uh, calcium, magnesium, iron salt still are there, so then they, they will be filtered. Okay? So pure brain is uh, passed through a uh, steam chamber and then dry one is sent to the diaphragm cell. Here, the reactions, diaphragm cell reactions, whatever the reactions are, reactions at anode and then cathode and overall reaction that we have seen, they are taking place here. Okay? So, those reactions separately shown because here we are not able to discuss in the flow sheet. Okay? So, here H2 is produced, so that is uh, being taken out for the, uh, as a fuel for the boilers, etc. or for, or to use as synthetic chemical within the uh, industrial complex. Okay? Whatever the Cl2 is formed that is in wet condition, so that wet chlorine, you know, you try to remove water uh, and then dry it in a dryer where H2SO4 is supplied. This H2SO4 and Cl2, they are not contacting actually, they are uh, passing through in a different cells. Like let us say if it is having some helical uh, shapes like this, right? So, uh, in this helical shapes, this H2SO4 may be passing and then in the uh, surroundings, you know, this uh, chlorine, wet chlorine is going passing through. So, when it can indirectly, there is no direct contact, indirect contact between Cl2 and then H2SO4 takes place and then H2SO4 uh, is, in nine, at, if it is 98 percent pure, so it fumes actually. So, then because of that hot condition, the Cl2 get dries. Okay? If at all still moisture is there, that is removed and then 
Cl2 is uh, refrigerated at minus 30 degree centigrade and then stored as a liquid Cl2, right. Whereas the solution here whatever you get here usually 10 to 12 percent of NaOH only it is having. So, that solution is passed through multiple effective operators not one we have shown only one there may be 4 or 5 effective operators are possible to increase its concentration to 50 percent, okay. How we do it? We use the steam for the evaporation of that 10 to 12 percent NaOH solution and then when it pass through multiple effective operators its concentration increases by releasing the water vapors from this solution, okay. Whatever the salt precipitates are there they will be centrifuged uh, and then they will be sent to salt saturators, right brine solution is also supplied. So, whatever the brine solution is there that would be passed through a filter to check if any impurities are there uh, to remove, then it will be passed through a mercury cell, right. Here now this is the mercury cell, here again the reactions whatever the reaction we have discussed uh, under mercury cell those reaction takes place. Let us say at the anode uh, the Cl2 formation is taking place and then that Cl2 is being dried in a similar way as we have uh, done for the diaphragm cell, okay. Whereas, the sodium amalgam that is forming that has been sent to denuding tower to which in a counter current direction water is supplied. So, that this sodium amalgam reacts with water to give sodium hydroxide and then uh, hydrogen gas and then this mercury, right. So, hydrogen is taken uh, from the top. Uh, to collect as a synthetic fuel or it will be sent to the boilers for a burning purpose, etc. Okay. Whatever the solution is there that will be passed through a filter to check you know if at all, uh, mercury is present or not and then you get a 70 percent caustic soda from the top as a product whereas, the depleted brine is there that will be recirculated to mercury cell as well. Okay. So, this is the uh, process where we have discussed both the uh, diaphragm cell process as well as mercury cell process in a combination, individually also you can do, okay. The pictorial representation of the reaction that are occurring in uh, diaphragm cells, if you see we have a diaphragm separating two compartments, towards the anode compartment a pure brine is uh, passed and then Na plus Cl minus ions are forming by applying the electromagnetic field, then this uh, Cl minus releases electron towards the anode and then forms chlorine and then taken from the top through the uh, diaphragm Na plus ions passes through towards the cathode and then Cl minus also passes but less amount it passes. So, towards the anode this uh, water is being supplied so then H plus and then OH minus are forming that Na plus O and OH minus react together to give NaOH solution and then H plus receives the electron from the uh, that is released by the chlorine and then uh, whatever the H2 is formed that is taken from the top cell liquor is taken from the top and then concentration minimum NaCl concentration has to be maintained. How you do it? Either you add water to the cathode side or you add a NaOH solution or you know not add or you recirculate the NaOH solution towards the anode side so that to maintain minimum NaCl concentration because it acts as a barrier and then there should be a concentration gradient to transfer of the ions. Similarly, mercury cell process. Uh, reactions are, are shown schematically here. Here again uh, whatever the pure uh, brain is there that is taken towards the anode and then uh, Cl minus Na plus are formed by applying the electromagnetic field. This Cl minus releases electron towards the anode and forms chlorine and then gets as a product from the top, okay. Na plus reacts with the mercury to form NaHg. This NaHg taken and then denuding of this sodium amalgam has been done by reacting with water to form NaOH and then uh, hydrogen gas and then mercury released. Depleted brain is taken from the top, okay. Now, these are the processes or the reactions that are occurring in the electrolytic process whether it is diaphragm cell or uh, mercury cell, right. The same thing we are going to see as a uh, description here in the next slide. Process description, a combination of the diaphragm and mercury cell processes uh, shown in the flowchart and then we are discussing here. 
Brine solution flows through pipelines to a storage reservoir and then through a brine treatment system. Actually, all those steps have not been shown in the flow chart. We have just shown a uh, brine purification chamber like that. In that one, there may be several steps before getting a purified brine. Okay? So, caustic soda, soda ash and our barium carbonate are being used in the purification uh, treatment system or brine purification uh, system to remove calcium, magnesium and then iron salts. If you do not remove, it is possible that they may be clogging up the diaphragms and then efficient uh, electrolytic decomposition of NaCl may not take place. This purified saturated brine which is having 25 to 28 percent NaCl is heated and electrolyzed in a diaphragm cell. The cell which is operating at 45 to 55 percent decomposition efficiency discharges 10 to 12 percent of NaOH solution. Actually, you know, if efficiency is more, then it is possible that higher concentration uh, NaOH solution may be produced. And then it is produced with an amount, an equal concentration of NaCl. Then multiple effect evaporators are used to concentrate this uh, 10 to 12 percent uh, NaOH solution to increase its concentration to 50 percent NaOH solution. This may be taken as a product or further subsequent concentrating processes can be done. Precipitated salt is separated, centrifuged, washed and then slurried with the treated brine. Salt separator overflow is 50 percent caustic soda product containing only 2 percent NaCl and then 0.1 to 0.5 percent sodium hypochlorite on dry basis. This commercial caustic grade can be evaporated to produce saturated 73 percent NaOH liquor or fused to flakes, granular, rustic caustics, different forms as per the requirement. Purified grade can be produced by a combination of a treatment of calcium carbonate to remove colloidal iron and then liquid ammonia counter current extraction to take out chloride and chlorate impurities if at all present. Depending on the impurities present, one has to choose the purification process as well as the depending on the requirement of purification also, one has to choose the concentrating process or purification process. Now we see the third process, membrane process. In a membrane cell, a cation exchange membrane separates the analyte and catholyte. Brine is fed into the anode compartment where chlorine gas is created and sodium ion and associated water of hydration migrate through the membrane into the catholyte. Actually, the membrane has to be very selective, it should allow only sodium ions. Okay? So, here pictorially it is shown, so we have a membrane and then it is a ion exchange membrane. Okay? So, one side of this one is uh, anode, another side is the cathode size. So, towards the anode compartment, pure brain is being uh, supplied so that Na plus and then Cl minus ions are uh, forming by decomposition or by electrolytic decomposition of uh, NaCl on application of uh, electromagnetic field. Okay? The Cl minus ions whatever are there, they release the electrons and then form chlorine gas that is taken from the top. Whereas the membrane is selective to Na plus ions only. So, these Na plus ions will move towards the cathode where it reacts with the OH minus which is already being present towards the cathode side because towards the cathode side you are supplying water and then that is being decomposed into H plus and OH minus. So, this Na plus and then OH minus are forming together as NaOH. This H plus is uh, receiving the electron released by the chlorine ion and then forming the hydrogen gas. Depleted brine is taken from the top of the anode compartment. Okay? So, this is the process actually pictorially that is what it is happening. Unlike the diaphragm cell process, cation exchange membrane prevents the migration of chloride ions into the catalyte. Diaphragm cells also, you know, uh, chlorine ion transport from the anode side to the cathode side is very less. But however, it is completely prevents the transport of chloride ions uh, you know, from anode compartment to the cathode compartment. Such kind of selective cationic exchange membrane one has to choose. Depleted brain is discharged from the analyte to maintain a minimum NaCl concentration. Water is electrolyzed at cathode and strong caustic 32 to 35 percent is produced either by controlling water addition rate directly to cathode side or cathode compartment size which is known as the catholyte or recirculating caustic to which water has been added. Okay? There is some back migration of hydroxyl ions which should not be 
occurring but however it occurs. So, because of that one there is a loss of current efficiency. Membrane is the most critical component of this cell. So, because of this one current efficiency, cell voltage and energy consumption are greatly affected by the quality of the membrane that you are using for the membrane cell electrolytic process to produce chlorine and sodium hydroxide. So, we know the importance of the membrane. So, other important factor about consideration or selection of membrane in chloroalkali industry is that it is being exposed to the chlorine and then caustic soda on either side. So, one side it is being exposed to the chlorine, other side of the membrane it is exposed to the strong caustic that is NaOH. Both of them are very corrosive. So, then membrane should have a certain characteristics uh, to sustain longer. Okay? So, thus requirements for membrane separators are as follows. Durability under the conditions of chloroalkali electrolysis, it should have good mechanical properties and long term stability for practical use. Then it should be highly selective for transport of sodium ion only or potassium ions only. It should not allow the chloride ions to pass through membranes. Negligible transport of chloride, hydrochloride and chlorate ions that should be the other characteristic of the membrane. Zero back migration of hydroxide ions, it is unavoidable there may be something but it, it one should make sure that it should be zero back migration of hydroxide ions and then low electrical resistance. It should not have electrical resistance because this process taking place you know electrolysis, electrolytic decomposition is taking place then only process is movement of charges etc. is taking place. For a new plant membrane process is the first choice because both capital and the operating costs are the least. You know membrane cells you need if the membrane is not expensive then you know membrane process is the best one because its capital as well as the operating cost are very less. Also advantages of the membrane process further increases if the energy prices increasing. Energy prices usually increase gradually right. Under such conditions membrane processes are found to be very attractive. Mercury and diaphragm plants are being converted to or replaced by membrane processes because of two reasons. One is the cost, another one is the you know environmental consideration. Asbestos, mercury, impurities, you know losses you have to make sure that that is almost 0. So, because of these two reasons these mercury and diaphragm plants are being replaced or should be replaced by membrane processes. So, now we see merits and demerits of each of the process, three processes. We start with the merits and demerits of mercury process. Advantages pure 50 percent NaOH solution is uh, produced uh, without requirement of any evaporations. Chlorine gas whatever produced is pure. Disadvantages higher voltage requirement than the diaphragm cells. Thus, energy consumption would be 10 to 15 percent higher compared to the diaphragm cell process. And then more stringent uh, brain purification requirements you need uh, highly pure uh, brain solution for the mercury process and then mercury contamination should be avoided. Stringent mercury contaminants avoidance measure should be is required because you know whatever the liquor discharges takes place if at all there is a mercury that releases into the uh, or that goes into the rivers and then rivers uh, the fishes may be consuming them because of the might. Uh, bacterial activity taking place between bacteria and then uh, mercury, you know methyl uh, mercury formation is taking place. This is very dangerous if these are being consumed by the fishes, both to the fishes as well as the human being consuming those fishes. Now, merits and demerits of diaphragm process, advantages utilization of less pure brain is, uh, is one advantage and then Obviously, as discussed previous slide, voltage requirement is lower compared to the mercury process. Disadvantage is that NaOH produced is both dilute and chloride contaminated. So, its purification is required and then that purification is done in multi effective operators. Chlorine gas also it is not pure it contains oxygen. Rigorous measures required to avoid asbestos emissions same like mercury emissions or mercury losses. Merits and demerits of membrane process, advantages of uh, membrane process you get pure NaOH solution. And then electrical energy consumption is only about 77 percent of that of the mercury process. 
much lesser than the mercury process. Okay? And since there is no mercury or asbestos being used, their loss is not there, so then this environmental problems may not be there. Disadvantages, NaOH content only 33 percent by weight, whereas the chlorine gas here also contains oxygen and then very high purity brain is required for this process, that is a major important thing. And then high cost and short lifetime of membranes. Membranes are expensive and then their replacement has to be done very often okay, because of their short lifetime. Now we see comparisons of three process. What we have seen is a kind of a merits and demerits of individual process. Now we compare one with the other in terms of the purity and then other kind of things. So catalyte from diaphragm cells typically analyzes 10 to 12 percent NaOH and then 15 to 17 percent NaCl. This cell liquor is concentrated to 50 percent NaOH in a series of steps primarily involving three or four evaporators, multi-effect evaporators are used to increase its concentration, that is the big problem. But such kind of problem is not there uh, in the case of membrane cell. Whereas membrane cells produce 30 to 33 percent NaOH which is evaporated in a single stage to produce 50 percent NaOH. Now you see here in order to get 50 percent NaOH, you need a series of evaporators, multi-stage evaporators are there. Here you need only single stage evaporator to get the same 50 percent NaOH, right? So now you see the capital cost, you know capital cost here would be 4 to 5 times higher, higher capital cost because you need 4 to 5 evaporators whereas here you need only one single stage evaporator is sufficient, okay? So, if you have more uh, equipment, their maintenance, their operation cost would also be increased. So, that means operating cost would also be higher in the case of a diaphragm cell compared to the membrane cell. And then 70 percent of caustic containing very little salt, only 2 percent is made directly in mercury cell production by reaction of sodium amalgam from the electrolytic cells with the water. Here Good thing about this uh, mercury process is that you get the 70 percent pure sodium hydroxide solution which you do not get by even by the membrane cells or the diaphragm cells also, okay? So, but the only problem with this is that you know how are you handling the mercury losses? There should not be any mercury losses because if there is a loss of mercury then that will be going into the plant waste water and then that is having strong environmental constraints. Electrical energy consumed during the electrolysis of brine produce chlorine gas and sodium amalgam is greater than that used to generate chlorine and hydrogen in the diaphragm or membrane cell, right? In the uh, mercury cell, this is another problem. The electricity and electrical energy requirement is much higher compared to the remaining two processes. However, other side of the coin if you see, when you produce these things using membrane or diaphragm cells, they also use energy in the form of steam for evaporation of cell liquor. Now you see here a diaphragm 4 to 5 effective evaporators are required to get 50 percent NaOH solution. In the membrane cells, you need a single stage evaporator, right? Whereas in mercury cell, no evaporator required. Directly you are getting 70 percent NaOH solution by mercury cell process. Whereas in these two process, by using different evaporators, then you are getting 50 percent NaOH. So, but energy consumption is slightly higher in the uh, mercury cell, but energy if you see only electrical energy then it is higher in the mercury cells. But energy consumed in the form of steam for evaporation uh, purposes uh, in the other two processes of diaphragm and membrane cell processes then almost energy is same. That is minimum energy required to convert salt to Cl2, H2 and 50 percent NaOH is almost same in all three processes. How much it is? Approximately 6.05 gigajoules per ton of chlorine produced. Okay? So, that way energy is not a factor to consider to select a process. Okay? Mercury process is the best one from the product point of view, 
but only thing that if you can handle mercury losses without releasing them into the uh, wastewater uh, of the process then mercury process is the best one. To produce solid salt needed for mercury cells, centrifuged salt is added to salt saturator where depleted cell brain contacts the salt and provides a replenished feed to electrolyzing compartment of mercury cell. This is we have seen in the flow chart. Okay? Whatever the uh, salt precipitates are there, so that were centrifuged, dried and then sent to the salt saturator where depleted brine is also being sent so that to make up the required NaCl concentration. Wet chlorine gas from anode is cooled to remove water and further dried in sulfuric acid uh, scrubber that also we have seen. Gas is condensed by one of the following pressure temperature combinations. In the flow sheet we have shown only refrigeration, but how what are the conditions? Three possibles are available. One is the high pressure 7 to uh, 10 atmospheric pressure water cooling option and then medium pressure 2 to 3 atmosphere and refrigeration at minus 20 degree centigrade option and then low pressure 5 to 10 centimeters H2O refrigeration at minus 40 degree centigrade in order to condense the chlorine gas. So, depending on the availability of the sources, one has to choose the process. Rotary compressors with sulfuric acid seals are uh, specified for this liquefaction process. Hydrogen evolved at cathode is either burned for the boiler fuel or used as H2 source at plant locations where diversification of processes can utilize hydrogen in chemical synthesis. So, that is about the electrolytic process using the diaphragm cells, mercury cells and then membrane cell processes, their comparisons, their merits and demerits etc. Now, we will be discussing major engineering problems associated with these kinds of uh, electrolytic processes. Major engineering problems, choice of cell design, which cell should be used? In India almost all three types of cell processes are being utilized for the production of a caustic soda NaOH. Dominance in capacity and production is in the order of primary mercury cell followed by the membrane cell and then followed by the diaphragm cell. So, this is the most utilized here in India. Membrane cell process is the most modern, energy efficient and pollution free, okay? whereas conversion costs of existing mercury cells and diaphragm cells has become prohibitive. This is due to high cost of capital equipment, high technology transfer fees compounded by an import duty on capital equipment. Because of this thing, adopting the membrane cell technology has not at the expected pace. Okay? Then second uh, engineering problem to concern about is the corrosion because chlorine, sodium hydroxide both of them are corrosive as well as sodium chloride also at elevated temperature is corrosive. So, then accordingly the corrosion issues should be handled. Handling wet chlorine requires stoneware, plastic, glass or rubber lined equipment. After drying with H2SO4, chlorine can be handled in mild steel or iron. Brine solutions are also very corrosive at elevated temperatures. Evaporators for cell liquor must be nickel lined to avoid iron contamination because NaOH is highly corrosive. Remainder of the plant can be constructed by cast iron, steel and wood. Mercury cells are also made with rubber lined steel. Now, coming to the economics, plant location is very much essential because lot of solution is required and then transportation of the salt etc. has to be reduced. So, location need careful analysis of such factors as cheap power and salt sources coupled with the rising cost of transportations. In some cases, it has more advantages to locate within a plant complex or near the product market because of the relative cost of transporting salt and then finished products. Let us say we have seen NaOH and then Cl2 both of them are used in pulp and paper industries. Okay? So, in this pulp and paper industries, so there itself if you have a electrolytic process, the there itself you can use them as a product directly. Okay? So, still there would be transporting uh, requirement would be there only for salt, not for the product. So, that kind of uh, arrangements one has to make. For example, one third of caustic soda plants are attached to paper and rayon mills. Caustic chlorine hydrogen balance is required. Whatever, it is not about the co-product. Often it has been misunderstood by the researchers as well as the industrialists that if you produce 
more number of components, chemicals in one plant, it is going to be more beneficial. That is not true here because in India, whatever the uh, chlorine and then sodium hydroxide produced um, by electrolytic process, chlorine only 65 percent of the chlorine is being used directly wherever uh, applications are there as per the end uses we have shown. Rest of the uh, 35 percent etc. is burned to produce HCl or disposed of. And then disposing the chlorine is a tough problem compared to the disposing of hydrogen. So, if you do not have market and then even if you are getting a co-product it is not going to be uh, you know economically you know beneficial for you, okay? there should be balance. Utilization of chlorine at a rate of 65 percent production as was case in India was not considered economic. Excess chlorine whatever is there that has to be burned to HCl formation or otherwise destroyed. You know, destroyed uh, decomposition is a big problem because this chlorine is uh, a toxic gas, you cannot release more than 2 ppm into the air. Hydrogen disposal is a much easier problem, but nowadays rather disposing hydrogen you should see how to store it because hydrogen energy is the need of the hour. Outlet for saleable chlorine must be developed to balance caustic chlorine co-production. Additionally, uh, recently you know most of the chlorine is also being used for this uh, polyvinyl chloride manufacturing as well as chlorinated hydrocarbons prepared from petrochemical industries. For that purpose also chlorine is being used nowadays. In advanced countries, balance is the reverse that is caustic soda being the disposal problem. In USA especially, chlorine is being consumed, whatever is produced it is being consumed, there is no excess, there is no disposal problem of chlorine, but NaOH is not being consumed. So, there is a problem of disposal of this NaOH in USA, whereas in India it is reverse. In India, chlorine disposal is a problem and then NaOH is a common chemical that is being consumed whatever is produced. This explains why other chlorine processes are important for other countries. Lime soda process, since this process produces no chlorine, it might appear attractive for Indian conditions because we are having excess chlorine, okay? our chlorine requirement is less. Cost of soda ash is too high and electrolytic process is the choice until sodium carbonate cost drops to less than half of that of the sodium hydroxide per unit weight. Okay? The situation is even more favorable for electrolysis as more Cl2 co-product is utilized. If it is not utilized then it is a problem. Choice of electrolytic cell. Production costs at a given location must be considered whether are you going to take asbestos uh, cells or mercury cells or membrane cells. Mostly asbestos and mercury cells are being imported. So, accordingly you know one has to uh, see production costs. Mercury cells are desirable for rayon grade caustic because it produces 70 percent NaOH and for this rayon grades you know higher concentration NaOH solution is required. Okay? Mercury must be imported, but so must be asbestos also for the diaphragm cells. Only, not only the mercury, asbestos is also being imported. But this advantage may be diminished as newer installation favor mercury cells to meet the demand for high purity, high concentrated NaOH and take advantage of coupling procedure as we have seen in the flow chart. The chief concern in using mercury is its shortage and continuously rising price. In addition, pollution of waterways by mercury has become another issue nowadays. So, it should also be considered. It has been discovered that waste mercury is converted by bacteria to soluble methyl mercury which is ingested by fish leading to hazardous mercury contaminations in food fish. Power cost, it is most essential. Because of the power cost, Indian caustic soda industry is not at par with the advanced countries uh, sodium hydroxide uh, industries. The reason is that power cost, quality of power and then power tripping and cuts that we are facing in India, that is right. So, in order to avoid these problems, caustic soda industry are heavily depending on self power generation, but that is also expensive because for the self power generations you need fuel and then fuel prices are often administered and then gradually increasing. Okay? So, all these factors one has to take under, into consideration before selection of the process and then location as well. References for today's lecture are provided here. Thank you.